Hi, it's Al Cavelli here from LittleHouseEntertainment.com. I'm standing here with Peter S. Beagle, author and uh, all-around amazing creator. Nice to see Some, you, sir. Somewhat ragged Peter S. Beagle, who's been talking for three days. Yes, yeah, this is the last day of the convention, so Mr. Beagle's a little uh, tired, I'm sure. Looking forward to the end. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. Good. i always enjoyed this. And it, I, since I grew up in New York, you know, it's nice to be back, yeah. even for a little while. But... Yeah, I'm a little, especially because I haven't slept well these last night, so I'm a little ragged. Tonight, I'm sure I'll sleep seriously. Well, I hope you get some rest after the show. I'm sure, you know, it's nice to know that we're all kind of wrapping it up. Um, are you getting a chance to look around at the city at all? Not really. Um, we've been staying up in Washington Heights, which I, I know, you know, of old. But, no, we've mostly, it's been Washington Heights and the subway. And 11th Avenue. It's been mostly that, really. Yeah. But we will go up to Cragsmoor, New York, tomorrow. Okay. Where one of my three oldest friends lives. He was, there were three of us who grew up together, four of us all told, across the street from each other. Jake over here, Phil over there, me over here, and Marty, the foreigner from two blocks down. <laughs> And the kid, anyway, was a year younger than everybody. But we're all still friends. We all still look out for each other. And Phil was always the painter, the same way I was always the writer. So, when we're together, we fall into a kind of private language that we still have. We traveled across country together in 1963 on a couple of motor scooters. I wrote a book about it called I See By My Outfit, which was still the most fun I've ever had writing a book. Yeah. And that I'm looking forward to. Yeah, absolutely. Getting a chance to get reacquainted with your old, you know, that, collaborative friends. Well, the nice thing about having had friends for over 60 years is that you can either talk all night well, you can just grunt. Mm -hmm. And even the grunts are perfectly understood. Of course. Absolutely. Um, so, as a... I, I obviously was introduced to your work through the last year before, but um, I was just curious about a couple of creative things. I, I saw the movie, obviously, when I was a kid. I grew up with that. Um, how artistically influenced do you like to be on your written work? Like, how much do you like to influence how it's visualized, how it's seen? It's curious, but the visual has always been harder for me than the dialogue and characterization. I sometimes say that I see, I hear well. I don't think I see well, and I have to work on it. <clears throat> because I'm absent-minded, and I wander through a lot of events without really noticing them. But I listen to people. I listened to speech patterns, speech rhythms. I learned to do that when I was doing magazine work. And I learned that if I... I didn't have to shove a tape recorder in somebody's face, which I'd probably screw up. But if I listened and got the voice in my head, if I got the, the speech pattern, I could probably get the words. I could probably bring back the words. So... I. Anything, anytime you see any kind of showy visual description in anything I do, figure that I knock myself out over it. That I work really hard and slowly on it. Well, your, your attention to voices and detail is obviously evident in your dialogue work and your descriptions. Um, I'm curious, the, out of all the characters from that story in particular, the last year, um, I'm always fascinated by the, the butterfly. Can I ask a little bit about that? Just about your your like, what was the impetus behind that? Well, why'd you, why did you? Why was he? I was 23 years old, sharing a cabin in the Berkshires one summer with my friend Phil, the painter. And the butterfly, the butterfly speech, probably took me about three days to put together. The butterfly is as good a sketch of the inside of my head certainly at 23, and really today, maybe as close to a self-portrait as I ever drew. Because I have a ragbag mind that picks up shiny things like a magpie. I never think of myself as a scholar. I have friends who are scholars, but I read a lot, and I listen. 
and I talk to people. So that butterfly speech has a mix of old commercials, very old songs, poems, um, one-liners, and even the punchline of a mildly dirty joke that Phil and I were amusing each other with that summer. Um, Connor, my business manager, wants to publish a small piece called The Butterfly Decodexed, which would list every influence in that speech. I always have trouble because the book has been translated into about 25 languages, and translators will contact me not knowing what to do with that speech. And all I can tell them is make something up. <laughs> make up something on your own. I've never known you know, if they've gone, followed it through. But there's no translating it. It's just a time and a place. It's a little portrait into who you were back at that time. Yes. It's interesting. Very much so. Well, um, obviously you're here, you're promoting your work, you're promoting uh, the upcoming stuff. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what you have on the, on the horizon, how things going uh, in your future. Well, I have two novels, a young adult and a quote adult novel, that I hope to have done and out next year. And there'll be, the main thing is, a renovation of the film of The Last Unicorn. Not changing it, but bringing everything up to its best moments, that would have been its best moments if it had a larger budget. There were things you couldn't do in 1982 that you could do now. And this would, I hope, bring the film up to the standards of contemporary animation. And we're planning to tour with it to 60 or 80 American cities, you know, play, showing it in theaters for audiences, playing, you know, doing a question and answer session each time. And by the time that tour is done, the renovation, which will cost something like five million dollars, should be ready to be put back into theaters. So you'll be able to do a re-release of the Yes, yes. Something like what Disney did with The Lion King recently. Yeah. I immediately thought of The Last Unicorn when yeah. I saw The Lion King Redux. I was like, when are they going to do that again? Well, that's what we're aiming for. That's terrific. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, Sal. <laughs> very good meeting you. Yes, it was very nice meeting you, sir. Thank you so much for your time and for your work. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It was a pleasure. And I look forward to seeing your stuff in the future. I'm sure you will. I absolutely will. <clears throat> if I get some sleep. Yes, absolutely.